hello students in the last video lecture we start about the mongin method to solve the second order partial differential equation so today we will talk mongin method when we will not use the both linear factor of the mongin subsidiary equation we will use one linear factor okay and using one linear factor of mongin subsidiary equation and solve by using or you can say or will be solved by using lagrange's form okay lagrange's form that means pp plus qq is equal to r okay and you know that how to solve the equation which is in the lagrange's form you already know that that we have discussed already in the previous lectures so on the basis of that is i will discuss one example please have a look on that statement is here you have to solve the equation r y square plus 2 x y s plus x square t plus p x plus q y is equal to 0 so equation is given here first of all what you have to do by using for using the mongin method you have to find out the value of small r and t and you know that how to find out the value of you no know, need to remember these values r and t how to find out this value we have already discussed in the previous lecture you have to find out the value for dp and dq okay you find out the value of dp and dq what is p here you know that uh, p is you have to find out d of p p of function of x y okay and q is also a function of x y d of q of x y okay so you know that function of two variable is there total derivative of p will be given by cal p by cal x into dx plus cal p by cal y into dy but cal p by cal x aapka kya hai small p hai okay oh, sorry cal p by cal x into dx plus cal p by cal y into dy okay so uska use karke aapne kiski value find out karni hai just you have to find out the value of r and t okay aur r aur t ki value हमें कहाँ पर प्लेस करनी है जो आपकी गेवन इक्वेशन थी सो वेन आई प्लेस दिस वैल्यू इन द इक्वेशन नंबर वन सो यू विल गेट दिस वन सोल इट और यू कैन सी द मल्टीप्लाई द होल इक्वेशन बाय डी एक्स डी वाई वी विल गेट दिस इक्वेशन सो यू विल गेट दिस इक्वेशन सो वट यू हैव टू डू नेक्स्ट स्टेप जस्ट यू हैव टू कलेक्ट द टर्म्स हैविंग एस एंड यू हैव टू कलेक्ट द टर्म्स विदाउट एस ओके so we we collect the terms without s in one bracket and with s in one another bracket so this equation will be true if this part is equal to 0 and that part is equal to 0 only in that case that can be equal to 0 so you will take this is equal to 0 that i got and this is equal to 0 that i got okay in two equations ko hum call karenge mongin subsidiary equations so i'm using this one and i'm factorizing this one so when i factorize you can check that this is if i call y into dy as a and x into dx as b so it will be a square plus b square minus 2 into a into b okay so is a formula for a minus b whole square that means y dy minus x dx whole square is equal to 0 so its both the factors will be y dx minus y dy minus x dx that will be the same factors okay so that means i have only the one different factor so you can say your factor will be y dy minus x dx okay now if i do the integration that will be given by y square by 2 minus x square by 2 is equal to some constant c so take the lcm and transfer that 2 to the right hand side to 2c we will say that this is c1 so y square minus x square equal to c1 i got right so when you got this solution now what you have to do just use this value 
in the equation number another subsidiary equations actually you have to use this value over there so what is y dy is equal to you can say that this will be y dy is equal to x dx okay so in place of y dy wherever is y dy you can place x dx in the equation number this one okay so which is this equation equation number second you can put so when i use this value in equation number second so i can get over there this will be the equation in place of y dy i place x dx i got this one okay when i open this bracket again i got this one okay when i place the value after placing the value i got this one right now in the whole equation you can check that there is x dx is present in the first term second term and third term also in the fourth term also x dx is present so we just divide the whole equation by x dx so when i divide the equation i got this equation okay now you can check when i collect the terms y dp plus p dy if i collect this in another bracket and x dq and q dx collect value okay so when i collect these terms you can check that this is y as it is derivative of p plus p as it is derivative of y so this can be written as derivative of py so i write, write out this bracket as derivative of py now we look at this term x as it is derivative of q plus q as it is derivative of x so this can be written as derivative of x q by using the product rule you know okay this is the derivative of x py and this is derivative of x q that is equal to 0 so now you know that when i take the integration this will be got py and derivative of x q integration will be x q is equal to some constant i say constant is c2 okay now this is also a constant and one more equation we got this is equal to y square minus x square this is equal to some constant okay so now i can say that this constant c2 is a function of some another constant suppose function of some another constant c1 but we know the value of the c1 is y square minus x square so i place the value of c1 is y square minus x square so i got this equation so this will be the first intermediate integral okay so when i go to the first intermediate integral so by using this first intermediate integral i solve further now you can check that this is in the form of pp plus qq is equal to r which is the lagrange's equation okay so if lagrange's equation is there so how to solve this one if capital p value of the capital p is y value of the capital q is x and value of the capital r is this one phi 1 of y square minus x square so how to solve this we will write down the lagrange's subsidiary equations this will be given dx by capital p lagrange's subsidiary equations watch dx by capital p is equal to dy by capital q is equal to dz by capital r okay so you know that place the value of capital p is y capital q is x and capital r is phi 1 y 1 square or x 1 square minus y square so when i solve this one i first of all i consider these two factors when i consider these two factors you can check it will be dx by y is equal to dy by x so i just cross multiply and i got this equation when i got this equation just integrate that it will be x square by 2 minus y square by 2 equal to some constant so just 2 will be the lcm and transfer to right hand side that becomes another constant the x square minus y square is equal to some constant c3 right now i consider the factor last two factors i consider when i consider the last two factors you can check that it will be this one but you know that x square minus y square this value i already got x square minus y square is equal to c3 so i place this value c3 so that becomes dz by 51 c3 so i have these two factors now this one and this one okay i consider this one dz by 51 c3 is equal to d y by what will be this value it will be c3 plus y square okay that uh, if i place this value value of the x actually because i have dy and we don't have the value of 
y over here. So I convert this x in terms of y. You already know that. Listen is this one. So when I got the value of x square, that will be given by c3 plus y square. So what will be the value of x? That will be root of c3 plus y square, which is placed over here. Okay. So you just take the integration. When you take the integration, that will be z will be equal to what will be its integration? Root of a square plus y square dy. That formula will be given by log of y plus root of a square plus y square. Okay, plus some constant, and it was z by some constant. So I just multiply this constant to the right hand side. I got phi one of c three and all these things. Okay, but what is c three? C three value is x square minus y square. I place it over here, and I got this value. Okay, so in this way. You got the value of the C4. C4 will be given by Z minus of this term, right? So I got C4 equal will be equal to this one, right? But what is the value? Of? I can say that this is this value is equal to some constant C4, and above we have already got that this value is equal to some constant C3. So this phi4 can be written as function of some C3. Okay, I say that function of C3. But what is C three? C three is x square minus y square. So I place over here. I got that this value will be equal to phi two of x square minus y square, which will be this one. Okay. In this way, we will get the complete integral of the given partial differential equation. Okay. Now I have the another form of the partial differential equation. Now you check that. If we have the equations in the form of R R plus S S plus T T is equal to V, where we don't have any intermediate integral, okay? That means we didn't get the factors or perfect square, okay? If you are not getting two factors or perfect square of the Mangi subsidiary equation, then what you have to do? Just look at this example, then the idea will be clear. Suppose that I have the Partial differential equation q plus one as is equal to p plus one t. This is uh, small s, small p, q, and t are in the standard form as we are doing the notations. So, what you have to do? Just you have to place the value of the small r and small t. But r is not over here, so I just place the value of only t. So when I place the value of t, what is t? You know that dQ is equal to s dx plus t dy. From here, we get the value of the t, and we place this value over here. So when the value will be placed over here, now you collect the terms with s and the terms where s is not present. So I collect. Okay, rewrite the terms in this form. Take to the left hand side. That is equal to zero. Now we are collecting the terms without s and with s. Now this equation will be equal to zero if individually this is equal to zero and this term will be equal to zero. So when I considering this will be equal to zero and this term will be equal to zero, I getting this point, right? Now I getting the these equations is known as the Mangi subsidiary equations. Now you can check that there is not in the perfect square and also we can't find out the factors of this equation. Okay. When we didn't get the factors of this equation, so what you have to do now? Now we use both the equation to go get the solution, second and three. So how to find out? We divide the equation number two by minus of p plus one and dx. When you complete, divide by this minus p plus one and dx both side. So we'll get dq is equal to zero. So when you take integration, q will be equal to some constant c1, right? Now we consider the second equation, uh, sorry, third equation. So in this equation, divide the whole equation by dx because dx is present in first term and second term. So we divide the term equation by dx. We get this one. Multiply inside q dy plus dy and p dx plus dx. Okay. Collect the term dy plus dx in another bracket and q dy plus p dx in another bracket. Okay, you already know that. What is that? If uh, you already know that dz is equal to p dx plus q dy, right? 
right? So this is PDX plus QDY. This is actually DZ. So I write down the DZ and this DY plus DX is as it is. So now it becomes DX plus DY plus DZ is equal to zero, right? When you take the integration, it will be X plus Y plus Z will be equal to some constant, suppose C2, right? So now this is C2. X plus Y plus Z is equal to C2 and Q is equal to C1. So this constant C2 can be written as or you can say that this constant C1 can be written as function, some function of C2. So what is the value of C2? C2 is x plus y plus z. So place this value over here. So I will say that Q will be equal to function of x plus y plus z. Okay. So we want the complete solution. What is Q here? So Q is cal z over cal y. So I place it here. It is cal z over cal y of equal to f of x plus y plus z. So I separate the integral uh, terms. Okay. When I separate the terms, you will get that. What will be the integration? Integrating both sides with respect to y. So if I take integration with respect to y, in the left hand side you will get only z. Okay. And that will be f of integration of f into dy, right? So plus some constant. So what will be the constant? If you are taking the integration with respect to y, so x will be constant here. So write down the constant is g of x. Okay. So now you are seeing that when you are taking f of x plus y plus z into dy, okay. So you will get some another function of x plus y plus z. So I will call this function as uh, integration of this thing. I am calling this as f of x plus y plus z. Okay, so this term is using over here. So in this way, we will get the complete solution of the given second order partial differential equation when there is no factor or not the perfect square of the Monge subsidiary equations. Okay, so in this way, we done that topic. In the next class, we will consider the next topic. Thank you very much, students.